Uh, let me uh, start by uh, playing something for you first and talking about it later. Um, a short uh, little video that will last about five minutes. So, uh, have a watch. <laughs> to 
Lagos, Nigeria, and uh, before I say a little more about it, I just want to say that that was uh, filmed and uh, edited and uh, made by my uh, sweetheart and life partner, Andrea Hanke, a choreographer and visual artist who's here at the back. Um, thank you, Andrea. But um, the reason why I wanted to show that is Lagos is a very misunderstood place. Um, it's tremendously cacophonous and it uh, tr seems tremendously crazy when you first get there. But there's a lot of patterns there that are created by the people themselves, not architectural patterns like everyone else has been talking about in the conference so far, but more just people-generated patterns of economy, uh, markets. Lagos is, to me, the largest open-air market in the world. And I'll describe some of that by going backwards through the video and explaining who some of the people were. So the last guy, the kind of smiling guy who said uh, there was no reason to pay uh, the government anything and that he takes money from the transport, he was dressed in a sort of green and white uniform. He's what's called an agbero. And the agbero are people who literally extort money from the buses as they come by the major bus stops. Um, and when you first see it, you think this is this amazing piece of criminality where this guy just stands there and every conductor who comes by has to pay him 20 or 30 naira, which is about 20 or 25 cents. Um, and uh, there are so many buses. I mean, there's uh, close to 100,000 buses in Lagos. So these guys are making big, big, big money. This guy told me that he made uh, 10,000 naira a day, which is uh, about $85 a day, which is pretty big money um, for a guy who stands on the street corner. But in reality, he's a member of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, as are the conductor of the bus and the driver of the bus. And what this is, is an amazing, huge, self-regulated, informal economy. The government, back in the late 70s and early 80s, got out of the business of providing mass transportation for its people. And the mass transportation system was maintained by the National Union. And the National Union essentially runs these buses as, in part, this giant Ponzi scheme where they're sort of taking money from themselves and recirculating the money among themselves. Um, but at the same time, all the buses are running, they're falling apart, but there are actually designated routes and they go where they're supposed to go, and the conductors charge generally what they're supposed to charge. So it's this amazing self-regulated system that is keeping mass transit going in Lagos, and is in fact keeping Lagos going because there's no other, unless you have a private car, there's no other way of traveling around the city. There's no subway, there's no other form of mass transportation, so everyone has to take the bus. Um, rolling back a step, there was a very dusty, sort of landscape in the garbage dump, uh, which is in a neighborhood called Ojota, where uh, I was interviewing uh, two scrap dealers, uh, Andrew Saboru and Fatai Kanrumi. And um, Andrew is a really interesting story, because Andrew has been working in that garbage dump since 1988. He started off uh, as a teenager as a scavenger. Uh, going through all the materials at the dump and picking out the materials that he felt could be recycled and selling those materials. And he worked as a scavenger for 12 years and saved enough money to move up a notch in the informal pecking order of the dump and he became a scaler. And that's the person who weighs the scrap material that the scavengers bring around and tells them how much money they're going to get and then transfers that to a scrap dealer. And uh, now, within the past year, Andrew has saved enough money to move up another notch. And he's now a broker himself. So he's the guy that goes around and buys from all the other scavengers. Um, and to do this, Andrew developed a working capital of um, around 100,000 Naira, which is somewhere between 700 and 800 dollars. And every month he can invest 100,000 Naira and he makes 120,000 Naira. So he makes a 20% profit every month. Um, which is pretty good business, but what he's desperate for, totally desperate for, is a way of getting a loan. So he can increase his working capital 
so he can make more money, so the scavengers can sell more, 